This is a talk um, about boxes. Uh, and you're probably thinking, what are you talking about? And we'll get to that, don't worry. But first, uh, a little bit about myself. I'm Keegan, I'm a fourth year discrete math student. So that's computer science and maths. Uh, sorry for people who don't like maths. Um, I very occasionally do stuff for the Computing Society, um, as you might well know. Uh, and also, I am a box extraordinaire. But I know what you're thinking. Do you have proof? And yes, I do have proof of my box expertise. Uh, the first one is that, of course, I like boxes. I feel like that should qualify anyone to be an expert on boxes. But I do have uh, more evidence. Uh, so for example, I've ordered, collected, um, you know, cleaned up, placed, disposed of a concerning amount of pizza boxes uh, for the society. Um, and also, uh, as some of you might know, uh, I, my third year project was basically a combinatorial optimization problem on boxes uh, with some extra steps. So yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm pretty qualified to talk about boxes. Um, so, now, I want to you know, be relatable and talk about something, you know, a problem that you might have experienced yourself. So, have you ever you know, gone to Tesco or Aldi or whatever uh, and wanted to get um, 20 boxes of Weetos? Um, I know this is a pretty common problem. Um, I actually wanted to get 20 boxes of Weetos right here. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I, I, I think it's a little bit too expensive for that. I don't have the budget. Um, so, uh, the problem with buying 20 boxes of Weetos is that now you have to get those 20 boxes of Weetos um, back to your house um, or to whoever will accept them. Um, so, you know, it's quite difficult to figure out how do, how do we do that? It, well, it turns out there's this revolutionary invention, um, you know, state of the art, most wonderful, eco friendly solution um, a, a plastic bag. Um, and we're going to try and use that to get our Weetos back to the house. Um, but there are a few problems. Uh, and the first problem, uh, this is a very accurate representation of our bag, by the way. Uh, the first problem is that uh, each bag unfortunately costs 10p because, again, unfortunately, we are living in the UK. Um, the second problem is the average number of human hands is ever so slightly less than two, if you really think about it. So, it's, again, it's going to be quite tricky to get all those um, boxes back. Uh, and also, we could potentially need multiple trips. And that takes time. And, you know, time is something that's very precious. So, um, we're going to go and try and fit in as many Weetos as we can into our very expandable carrier bag. So, I can fit one here. Uh, and here, and here, and here. Oh no, I've run out of space. Oh no, I haven't. Th three dimensions exist. I can, I can fit one here. Um, and in fact, there's a little bit of space at the top of our bag, so I can actually fit one uh, on top like this as well. So we've done it. We've managed to fit, well, some of the Weetos. We need more bags. Um, so this is obviously a problem that I have and that you have. Um, and this is not just a problem for people. It's also a problem. Um, for giant multinational delivery companies. Um, so, uh, first problem is that each vehicle costs a lot of money. Uh, I put this in pounds, some people like dollars. Um, I mean, to be fair, at this rate, it's probably worth more in dollars. Um, the average pay of drivers is you know, probably not enough, but they actually have to pay their drivers, uh, which costs money. Uh, and also, they need to minimize the number of journeys that they want to take, right? You know, all the fuel costs, and also the, you want to you know, sell as many Weetos as possible. Um, so, how do we solve this problem? Um, now, this is a bit of a difficult question, right? There's a lot of, uh, how do we even begin to describe how we're going to try and compact all the, well, not just Weetow boxes, all these packages into um, the smallest space possible, or the container possible? Well, we have to make assumptions, right? So, the first assumption that we're going to make is, um, well, if you have, normally we'd have like a, a, a maybe like a box shaped package that might be in a cylinder uh, that might be in, well, to be honest, I think only a Toblerone really looks like that. But um, the point is, uh, first assumption, um, they're all boxes. You know, no, no funky shapes, please. Um, that's just going to make our lives a whole lot easier. And in fact, it's the most standard way to pack stuff. So it makes sense to make that assumption. Um, assumption number two, um, just a temporary assumption. Um, you... Most people think in three dimensions. However, it might be more useful um, for now to think about it in two dimensions. Or, you know, one dimension. Yeah, why not? Go back to our line. So, um, reduce the dimensionality of the problem for now, and then maybe we'll find stuff that allows, that passes back up through the dimensions and lets us figure out the big problem. Okay. So, let's start with one dimensions. How hard can it be, right? So. We've got um, a line, or sorry, a box in one dimension, uh, and some other boxes as well. 
Uh, so this is our containers. And we want to fit all these different you know, boxes into these containers. And all we want to do is just minimize um, the number of lines. Does anyone know what this problem is called? Yes. It is called bin packing, yes. And as we know, this is a wonderful problem that is very easy to solve. Uh, let's have a quick look at it. Oh, it's strongly NP complete. Uh, ooh. Uh, okay, well, we can probably just find like an approximation for it and it'll be good enough, right? Oh, uh, okay. So if anybody wants to prove that P is NP, um, if you send me the proof, um, hand it to me, put my name on it, and I'll give you 5,000 uh, pounds. Deal? Deal. Okay. Um, so I think we need to make another assumption here. And that assumption is going to be that all these packages with these weird sizes and shapes, let's just assume that they're all identically sized, right? Because a lot of the time, you have a shipping container, it's going to contain the same type of item. So I think that's a reasonable assumption to make for now, right? OK. So now we've got these nice identically shaped packages. Um, and let's call that this, they each have length A, and the, the line has length uh, B. Uh, so we can just whack, 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 and that's the most we can fit in. We know that for certain. If we have k total items, firstly, how many boxes can I fit in a single container? Uh, the answer is this. Uh, that means the floor function, just means we round down. Um, and how many containers do I need for all the boxes? Well, um, it's kind of similar. We take, we take what we had before, uh, we divide it, and then we round up. So um, it's, maybe it's not like amazingly clean, but it's still quite clean. And in fact, uh, one thing we've realized, we can realize now, once we find out how many uh, boxes we can put into a container, we know that that's the maximum that container can hold for all containers. So we can just carry this back up the dimensions, right? Which is nice. So we only ever have to focus on, in future, how many can fit in one. And then we'll know how many it will fit in for, uh, to fit a certain number of packages. OK. So that's 1D. What about 2D? So. We've gone back into the second dimension. That's nice. And I think we should start by, again, making it quite simple. Let's look at squares. So uh, squares have a side length of A. We don't have to worry about the second side length. It's the same. And we'll have a bigger container of side length B. Um, so if I whack those two together, um, so how many boxes can I fit in this one? Well, we can just go duh, duh, duh. Yeah, OK. Uh, and there is a formula for this, again. Um, it's kind of similar to the last one. We only care about going up to here. And then we just square whatever we had. So like this, and it's pretty similar to what we had before. Um, what about rectangles? So uh, this is slightly different. We have to you know, specify more things, so A1, A2, and B1, B2. Um, and note that we always have, um, just for generalization's sake, it helps us. We're just going to say that A1 is less than A2, and B1 is less than B2. OK, so let's go and plop some rectangles in. OK, three. No, that doesn't seem right. Oh, yeah, of course. We can just rotate it. So if I rotate it, I can fit in two more. Isn't that nice? Um, but wait, what if we just rotate it from the start? So we put it in um, in a different way. So if I just rotate them, but, 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 we could have actually fit six in, not five, all along. Um, that's great. Um, but is there a general formula for this? I mean, surely it can't be that bad, right? Uh, let's have a look. L is the max of L1 and L2. Uh, now, what is L1 and L2? Um, it's this. OK. Percentage, that means, um, means the remainder from division. So yeah. Um, but it is intuitive, if you really think about it. It's kind of going like, OK, so we're going to want to pack as many as we can here. And then with the remaining space we have, we want to try and pack as many as we can uh, going in the direction. And that does work here. Um, but. Uh, I feel like I'm missing something. OK, one last 2D example. Um, so let's say I have a package, uh, sorry, a, if I have a box that's 6 by 1, a container box that's 5 by 5. OK, well, I'll try and mash them together. Uh, no, that doesn't work. Uh, no. Oh, wait, but what if I, Ooh. oh, no. OK, so um, we can actually pack things diagonally as well. Um, and this only happens when A2 is greater than B1. Um, and OK, that's great. We can deal with that. We can deal with that. Um, oh, oh, OK. Well, well, we can deal with that too. OK, we'll, we'll sort it out. OK, so firstly, to make things even simpler, just for now, ju just for now, uh, there's only going to be one box. Um, <laughs> I guess they just decided to go like you know the Amazon route of giving you a massive box and putting one item in it. Um, so let's do rotations with one box. 
And we will need to bust out some tools. And those tools are to do with triangles. Sorry, uh, this is a trig lesson now. Uh, yeah, so we've got the angle theta. We've got uh, x. And this, is, this means that x cos, the, x cos theta and x sine theta. So you can probably see how this might apply to our box when we're trying to work stuff out. So firstly, let's assume that our box is going to be rotated um, by some angle theta. But between 0 and 90, it doesn't really matter once you go past that because it's all symmetrical. Um, so let's just um, zoom in a little bit. Okay. So you can see kind of how it applies there. Because that's A1, that's theta. So we can work out that this bottom bit here is A1 cos theta. Uh, and if we just shift this along, okay. Uh, that one is 90 minus theta, A2. So we can work out that this bit is A2 sine theta. Okay. And now, if I move it all back, uh, you can see that we have to have this be less than B1 when we fit it in. Uh, and we also have to have um, the other side uh, is kind of similar. We have to have this also hold. OK, so now I've got a weird angle in here. So is there any way to eliminate this angle? Uh, and the answer is yes. Yes, we can. Uh, so all we have to do, and this is really simple, uh, we just take uh, these two equations, uh, we add them, so we get this, uh, and then we factorize, so we get this, and then we divide, so we get this, and then we uh, square it for some reason. Uh, don't worry, it'll make sense in a second. Uh, and then we just whack it up here. Uh, then we take the two equations again, and now we subtract them. So then we get this, uh, and then we factor, so we get this, and then we divide, so we get this. Uh, oh, we square them again. Okay. Almost done, I promise. The last thing we need to do, just, just add them back together again, and we get that. Wonderful, isn't it? Wait, no, actually, I can simplify this. Uh, if I expand that out, uh, then all the, a lot of the terms cancel. We get that. And does anyone know what cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is? Yes, it is 1, which means, if it, can it fit? Uh, yes, but only if this. <laughs> and that's one rectangle, one box. Let's remove that assumption. Um, so if we have rotations with multiple boxes, uh, so buh, 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 uh, you can see it's almost like a line of falling dominoes. Um, and uh, they're all rotated at the same angle to try and fit the most that we can. Um, and in fact, there is an exact formula for that. Um, it, uh, this is left as an exercise to the reader. Um, it, you know, you, you can do it if you want, it's fine. Um, for what it's worth, you can actually find this. Um, just don't spend too long on it, you've got your degree. Um, one small problem, though, um, again, uh, if you take a look at this, and you can see word go sort of going, duh, 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 that's great. However, if I just rearrange them like that, I can also fit one here. So even when I do it diagonally, I'm not guaranteeing that all of them are diagonal. And now it's just horrible. How do we even get a formula for this? Um, so I think we're going to make a really reasonable assumption uh, and say that no, no rotations. No, no, no rotations. Just 90 degrees. It's fine. We'll just move on. D don't worry about it. Um, so let's, talk, let's go to 3D now. So with all our information, we can now go to 3D. Um, we've kind of restricted ourselves to doing some, like, not that, you know, not the most amazing moves, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, so I think... Uh, that it's demo time. So, I've actually gone and got some mini dice to be able to um, actually uh, do this. I've even stitched them together into like little boxes as well. Uh, so let's go and do this. So this would be a four by uh, three by two box, which we can actually make using these six here. If I wanted to make um, a three by three by three, if I wanted to fit stuff in that size, um, how many of these um, would I be able to uh, fit? Would I be able to fit in uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven of these into a box? Five? Okay, yeah. I think you can fit in five. So let's do... Uh, oops, zoom be like. Okay. Uh, we've got this here. So now we can form that. I'll do it this side so we don't get solid tape everywhere. Um, so we, right now we've got a two by, it's hard to see on the projector, but we've got a two by, uh, two by three. If I now move this here, you can see we're starting to get a bit of a squeeze and we can just barely put something on top, right? So that's five. Do you think we can do better than five? Yes, no, maybe. Maybe, <laughs> okay. Um, so this is probably the sensible approach, right? It's what we did when we were doing it with 2D. 
So we just copy our approach over to there and it should work, right? Uh, so that's what we call a greedy algorithm to do it. Um, unfortunately for us, there is actually a better way. Um, so I'll, hopefully I'll show this to you why this is true. Yeah, so I've got these two here. I'm gonna place a red one. This means that the red one isn't actually there. And then, if I do this, I had did this for a reason. And the reason is that I can now place this here, put another missing one here. <laughs> this, oh, this is, gonna be, this is gonna be fun. I can put this on top and I can also put this here. And the last one would be another red. So in fact, I can actually fit six into a three by three by three box. And in fact, that breaks every single rule that we just learned. And it's still 90 degree rotations. How do we even generalize this? Like how? Like this is actually ridiculous at this point. Okay, so I'm gonna switch back to here. And by switch back to here, I mean um, try to switch back to here and probably fail. So you may as well abandon all hope at this point. The fact that we can do these sorts of things, you know, our greedy pattern has been shattered. Um, even 90 degrees doesn't save us, and basically our hopes and dreams are ruined. So, I think that we should try one last ditch effort to make it work, right? So let's go, and let's uh, have no funky shapes. We're gonna reduce the dimensionality again. Just go back to 2D, probably fine. We're gonna have identical, size, identical sized boxes, and new constraint, they are all squares. This should save us, right? Hopefully, I really hope. It doesn't. This is uh, for, taken from Wikipedia, um, and we'll show you that you can actually fit five squares into a certain type of box if you just do this, and 10 into that if you do this, and these have been proven to be the lowest. Um, and there are other patterns as well. Ooh, oh no. Okay, right, 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 right. Um, and that isn't the end of our problems, right? Because even if you somehow manage to pack something like this, right? Uh, now imagine you are the delivery driver. So let's just draw you here. Um, uh, and you decide, hmm, yes, I've got a bunch of packages in my truck. Let's deliver them to people. And then you open the back of the truck. What's going to happen? You just get crushed by the boxes. So really, I think that the things you should take away from this talk is, uh, firstly, seemingly simple problems can be very painful. Uh, secondly, increased dimensionality can make things very horrifying. Uh, and finally, uh, don't trust mathematicians. Um, don't let them anywhere near any sort of optimization problem. This is what they will do. Do not apply any of their techniques in real life. Uh, and that's the end of my talk. Uh, thank you very much.